So the New York Times had this really interesting pre piece on Jose Mujica, uh, or Pepe Mujica, who is the president of Uruguay. And he is one of those individuals who seems like the most selfless person you could ever imagine, okay? Mm -hmm. He's still living in the same tiny little home, and I think calling it a home is generous. Mm -hmm. Tiny little home that he was living in before he got elected. He uh, l gives away 90% of his income to uh, poor individuals. He lives on $800 a month with his wife. Okay, now hold up. Now you're going to think, ah, okay, look, you know, Mitt Romney could have given away his presidential income too. He's going to be all right. He's got 250 to probably to about $500 million, et cetera. So this guy's probably rich. Is Lifetime savings for this guy. And I literally can't believe this. But according to the New York Times, is $1,800. In fact, I want to show you guys the way he lives. Okay, remember, this is the president of Uruguay. Uruguay. Let's watch. Jose Mujica is a real handyman about the house. Una buena precaución. He's not a man that enjoys a life of luxury. But Jose Mujica is also the president of Uruguay and has been dubbed by the international media as the poorest president in the world. This is the house of the president of Uruguay. He says he owns just two vehicles, a small amount of property and his farmhouse. He also donates 90% of the salary, $12,000 a month, to charity. Amazing. So he was also part of a guerrilla group. He fought against the government and as a result he was imprisoned in solitary confinement for 14 years. Now, here's part of the reason why I like this guy. Now, first of all, he did his time for whatever crimes he did, and he said they, he admits they were overzealous. They did bank robberies, and not him necessarily, but that group had that he killed was people. With, but right. then the government had killed people in fighting back, etc., and, and starting the oppression in the first place. And look, understand that the people of Uruguay knew all this, and they elected him the, their president. In fact, the guy he was running against said, Oh, what are you going to do? Like that guy living in a cave? <laughs> and they're like, Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. and so so he's gotten past all that, but it, his perseverance is an amazing story. He's in prison for 14 years. Ten years of that, over ten years, was in isolation, solitary confinement. Mm -hmm. He said the only friends he had were the rats in his cell, and he and he thought, hey, why don't I befriend them? So and I, and now I'm filling in the blanks a little bit here. My guess is so they don't bother him at night. He would feed them a little piece of the bread that he got. Yeah, he would share it with the rats so that they were cool, okay? That's the kind of situation he lived in for 14 years, 10 years, it's shocking he didn't lose his mind. One of the other guys they arrested literally lost his mind in solitary confinement. So, so he sounds like an amazing person, but you know, obviously you guys probably want to know about his political beliefs, which are important in this context. Well, he's in favor of drug legalization. Awesome. He's in favor of legalizing uh, gay marriage. Winning. He's as progressive as it gets, okay? Yeah. Uh, and he's also totally pro-choice. Yes, he's pro-choice. You're right. Now, so many Latin American leaders, after they left office, said, oh yeah, our bad, we should have legalized drugs. Right, Vincente Fox, and you can list so many different presidents, then they go on campaigns. This is the only guy, while being president, says, mm -hmm. yeah, let's legalize it. What are we, who are we kidding, right? And by the way, he's a flower farmer, by profession. Yeah. Okay, he has a farm where they get flowers. Apparently, doesn't make that much money off of it, only has $1,800. Period. It blows me away every single time. And so, uh, you know, he's fighting the good fight. And, you know, Hugo Chavez is sick. Now they're saying if something ha were to happen to Chavez, he might be the leading leftist figure. Uh, in, in And by the way, his economy is doing well. Uruguay is growing at 3.6% rate, mm -hmm. which is really healthy, one of the best and one of the most peaceful countries in Latin America. So, really great success. So, tick tock, tick tock until we assassinate. <laughs> okay, now look, thank God Uruguay doesn't have oil mm -hmm. <laughs> or bananas. <laughs> Some of the reasons that we have invaded other countries or done coups or the president's plane just happens to crash at the wrong time. Golly gee, I don't know why that happened. Mm -hmm. Now, those are in the past. I hope we don't do that anymore. But you know, when Hugo, Hugo Chavez said, hey, the oil in Venezuela, you know what we're going to do? We're going to go ahead and keep that oil instead of just giving it away to the corporations as the former leaders were doing. Uh, so then he became Hugo Chavez. Oh my God, dictator of Venezuela. He's taking away everybody's guns. He's like Mao and Stalin, etc. If Uruguay had more natural resources, you'd be hearing a lot about Pepe, this president. 
Former terrorist. <laughs> <laughs> you think they wouldn't do it? You think they wouldn't do it? Wait, <laughs> wait, and let's see what happens. Okay, but for now, man, that's a man of the people. Definitely. Agree or disagree on his politics? You got to agree. He's certainly not taking advantage of it. And by the way, Uruguay also now one of the least corrupt countries in the world.